domain. Domain is the set of all possible input values. I'm going to give you two examples from a graph. Graph A and graph B. When we talk about the input values, we need to think about what the input tells us. On a graph, our input tells us how far to the left or how far to the right we can go. It's important to look at the end of a graph. For instance, even though this graph ends, this arrow at the what appears to be the end tells me that it's really continuing to go on and on forever. So this graph continues to the left, and if we notice, the graph also continues to the right. That's very different from graph B. On graph B, we have a point where it stops on the left and the right. So these are very different types of graph. This one goes on to the left forever, and this one goes also goes to the right forever. So we talk about the domain. How far to the left can we go? We can go forever to the left and forever to the right, which means my domain is the set of all real numbers. It can be written a couple different ways. I'm going to write this in set notation. So the domain is the set of x where x is an element of the real number system. This is just a different way of saying that x can be any real number. Now, for graph B, we notice that the x value to the furthest left is negative 4. The x value to the furthest to the right is positive 4 and there is an x value everywhere in between. So a couple different ways we can write this. In words, it would be easiest to say that my x is in between negative 4 and positive 4. But in mathematics, we're going to write this in a couple of different ways. I'm going to first start off using an inequality notation. The domain where x is in between negative 4 and positive 4. This can easily be converted into set notation. To write it in set notation, I'm going to write the domain is the set of x where, in this case, x is in between negative 4 and positive 4. So if you'll notice, the set domain is almost exactly the same as the inequality, because the inequality is part of how we would write it using set notation. Now, for the first exam, you are going to be required to write your answers in set notation. The other way that you've probably already learned how to describe domain is interval notation, where we could say the domain is between negative 4 and it's including it, so it's a bracket, through positive 4. The first and the last method are still acceptable methods in math, and you'll use them, but on the very first exam, you're going to have to write it using the set notation. To describe the domain of a diagram, we're going to have to list out all of the possible input. So for this, our domain is a little bit different than the other examples because my domain is not between 1 and 3. I cannot have 1.5 as a possible input. I cannot have 2.3 as a possible input. My domain only has three possible values and nothing else. My domain can be 1, or 2, or 3, that's it. So whenever we have a fixed amount of possible inputs, you must list each and every one of them to properly represent your domain. Now let's go back to graphs. Take a look at this function. I want to describe its domain. So what we're looking at are all the possible x values. Notice, on the left-hand side, the graph terminates. 
which means this is as far to the left I can go, which is an x value of negative 2. However, on the right side, we see an arrow, which means the graph does not stop moving to the right. This graph has no maximum x value. A couple ways we can rank this. The old inequality notation, which is a good place to start, is my domain is the set of x is going to be x greater than or equal to negative 2. I don't have to say less than infinity. Not everything is less than infinity. It's not necessary. So we just state x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now, our new notation, and that's what you're going to be tested on for this first exam, you would write it this way. The domain is the set of x where x is greater than or equal to negative 2. In this example, I'm going to give you a set that is represented in set notation. So here's a set of values. We'd like to talk about the domain. And once again, our domain is going to represent all of the possible input values. But notice I have a fixed amount of input values. I can input 1, I can input 2, I can input 3, and 1 is used again. If you recall from a previous lecture, this set is not a function. However, the set still has a domain. So the domain of this set would be the set of x values 1, 2, and 3. There's no reason to list 1 again. That's just redundant. So these are all the possible input values for this set. Now we have a set of information written in table form. So I have both a set of input values and a set of y values. If I want to talk about my domain, I must describe all of the possible input values. In this situation, my domain is going to be the set of x values such that I use 5, 3, 2, A, and B are also input values. So any of these values can be used as the input. That makes up my domain. For our last example, we're going to be given our information in function notation. So we're going to find our domain. You may want to first write this set of information either in set form or in a table form. I'm going to choose to write this as a table. And I'm going to look at each point as I go along and interpret what is written there. For the very first one, g of negative 4 is 5. I interpret that as my y value is 5 when the x value is negative 4. So I am done with that point. The next piece of information says my y value is negative 5 when the x value is 0. So I'm done with my second set of information. The third one, y is 5 when x is 4. And last but not least, y is 0 when x is 8. So I have rewritten all four pieces of information given in function notation, and I have rewritten this as a table. Now, it should be pretty easy to examine our domain. From the table, I will notice my domain is all of the possible x values. There's only one, two, three, four possible x values. I'll list each one. Either negative 4, 0, positive 4, or positive 8. That is the domain of the original 
values given in function notation.